Hello again, I am Blunty. Bit of a mishmash video for you today. We're going to bounce back and forth a bit, but we all kind of circle around stuff MSI are doing. Now, last week I bought you a video from Taiwan at the worldwide reveal of MSI's new gaming laptop lineup. Each and every one of which, even the littlest one, powerful enough to drive VR, believe it or not. Each and every one humming along on one of NVIDIA's new GeForce GTX 10 series laptop graphics chips. Actually, several of the models even use two of the damn things, which is lovely. All in all, it's pretty rad stuff. Well, today I popped along to the slightly less theatrically dramatic official Australian launch. Now, of course, much of the information released there was the same as I heard in Taipei, but there was also some new details about vital things like exactly how hot these laptops tend to run and how effective the new cooler design is at controlling. Because, as most of you will know, gaming laptops are a little bit notorious for getting warm, aren't they? So their cooling technology is kind of important. Short version of the story is the new coolers keep the temperatures at or below the previous generation, but they do it much quieter, sometimes only needing to run at half speed to achieve the same performance the older cooler needed 100% fan speed for. So that's pretty awesome news. I still don't have one in hand to do some proper real world normal bloke testing as I do, but the messaging from MSI keeps being pretty encouraging. We also finally got local Aussie price ranges, starting at $2,399 and ramping all the way up to almost $7,500 for the astronomically monstrous, powerful dual 1080 SLI configurations. Why anyone would actually need a laptop that powerful, I'm not exactly sure, but I want one. <laughs> Also, it was the 30th anniversary of MSI being a thing that exists, so there was a cake with an adorable little chubby sugary dragon on top. We did not, however, get any cake. They didn't even cut it. Womp womp. We did, however, get some snacks, and as a tribute to MSI's attention to detail, my snacks even had my name on them. At the end of the presentation, there was also a raffle, a bunch of business cards in a box, whip out a few, and the winners all got big, plushy MSI dragons. Apparently, there's only 10 of these particular big, plushy MSI dragons in the whole country, so congratulations to the winners. I did not win one. But at the event in Taipei, they had a very similar raffle, bunch of business cards in a big box, pull one out, winners get prizes. But instead of plushies at Taipei, they were giving away laptops. And guess what? I won one! <laughs> I never win these raffle things! But that's right, baby. The winner. It's me. A brand new factory fresh MSI GS72 6QD Stealth 17 inch laptop is mine. I had to unbox it in my hotel room before leaving Taiwan, as of course I had to bring it on as carry on because of its batteries and stuff. Now, sadly, while it is a relatively new model, having only released a few months earlier this year, it is not, of course, packing one of those spanking new GTX 10 series GPUs inside it. Womp womp. But that's not to say it's not a very powerful laptop. It is packing a bunch of grunt, a Skylake Core i7 6700HQ quad core processor, 16 gigabytes of 2133 megahertz DDR4 RAM, a 128 PCIe SSD, and a 1 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, a 17.3 inch 1080p anti glare screen. There is also a version of this model with a 4K screen, by the way. And the GPU is, by GTX 10 standards, a comparatively modest NVIDIA GeForce GTX 965M with 2GB of GDDR5 RAM. The keyboard is from SteelSeries, so that's nice, with three independently programmable RGB backlight zones. MSI even pack in a basic SteelSeries mouse so you can game on it properly right away without wanting to die because gaming on a touchpad is ridiculous. So that was a lovely thoughtful touch, I think. I am continuously, by the way, a bit distracted by the unusually busy keycaps because it is a traditional Chinese keyboard, not the cleaner, simpler, flat-out English keys I'm obviously more used to smashing my fat fingers on, but they do feel real nice to use. Solid Steel Series stuff. I like it. The laptop is thin, sleek, black, ninja-like, and the screen is pretty damn nice, I gotta tell you. And so... Even though it's not a GTX 10 series laptop, womp womp, I still wanted to know what happens to games churned through it, so here we go. Starting with No Man's Sky, hardly an ideal game to benchmark given its currently buggy nature and highly variable loads depending on how complex any given planet is, but still. It floats pretty consistently at or above 60 frames per second, also at medium graphic settings, which is pretty damn playable. Thank you. 
Doom on high settings under Vulcan also dances around the 60 FPS area rather pleasingly, spiking up to the 70s and down to the low 50s depending on how busy things get. The old fire strike test pulls in above 5100 points and reports temperatures at or below 71 degrees C. The fans were audible, but not even close to what I'd call loud, by gaming laptop standards at least, and with the coolers in the new GTX 10 series laptops promised to be even quieter and more efficient, I can hardly wait to see what they do. And that is the useful thing about this laptop to me. Do I wish it was a GTX 10 series? Of course I do, that's the new hotness, they are so badass! But this beastie does give me a superb waterline with which to measure those new models against. How much better is the new cooler design? How much better are the new audio chipsets? The new screens, the updated keyboards, the fancy turbo stuff they're doing to the SSD to make those even more faster and faster and faster. It's been a while since I've had an up-to-date gaming laptop in fact, so this prize is actually pretty damn perfect for refreshing my benchmark to measure against. While I've been waffling about that, you've been seeing Project Cars running at the GeForce Experience automatically recommended settings, and it runs damn fine, touching on the triple digits in fact. But it's not nearly as pretty as I'm used to playing this pretty game, so I punched up the settings, turning on all the cool stuff. I figure the GeForce automatic settings might be assuming that the GTX 965M is more commonly paired with a slower mobile i5 CPU, so I might be being a bit conservative on the settings. But in this laptop, of course, I've got a top-end mobile i7 to take up some of the slack. And yeah, look at that, much prettier, and still running real nice too. It is just below that magic 60 FPS we all love so much, which for a game like this mm, probably isn't ideal, but it is still pretty solidly in those 50s, so it's quite okay. I will probably tweak it a bit more and make sure I can stay above the 60 FPS though. Rise of the Tomb Raider at recommended settings benchmarks almost nailing 60 FPS average, and it plays real nice too, but to my eye, it looked a bit off. And turns out when I checked, the recommended settings actually crammed the resolution down to 1366 by 768. <laughs> nah, 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 bro. Not this scaler. So I tick it up to 1080p native, and I wind up with frame rates that average closer to 40 FPS. For this game, that's absolutely fine. I'll dive into the mid 30s from time to time and spike into the high 50s, and the overall experience is damn nice. So yeah, I'll get more playtime with this laptop, I'll get myself real used to it, and then measure the improvements of the new GTX 10 series against it. And by the way, I'm telling you right now, I've already seen some of what the new kids can do, and hot damn, they really are very impressive. Meanwhile though, I did get one more prezi from the MSI folk before I left the presentation today. A dragon plushie of my very own. Much smaller than the prizes they gave away, but still just as special. It is in fact a limited edition 30th anniversary one. See? Says so right there on its little belly. So, it needs a name. What shall we call him, commenters? Or her? What shall we call her even? Okay, that, that's that's the game. That's the game for the comments this time around. I need a gender identity. Oh, that's asking for trouble, isn't it? I need a gender identity and a name for my new little dragon pal. Go for it, guys. Try and be kind. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.